It is the system that is responsible for keeping the peace by making sure that every Black child that leaves their home uh, comes home safely. It is the system's responsibility to make sure that there is no, um, there is no uh, wealth discrepancy um, like there is in Atlanta, which is one of the largest wealth, dis wealth uh, uh, discrepancies in the country. Um, even though we celebrate ourselves for Black wealth, there is a huge Black deficit here as well. It is the system's um, responsibility to ensure that, you know, the people that are putting work into those communities do not have their communities stolen for, from them and, and returned to, to people with uh, with uh, wealth privilege, like we're seeing in the West End, like we're seeing uh, in all of the zones that we rep, right? Gentrification is stealing our neighborhoods from us as we speak. And it's the system's job to make sure that we, we're using our, our constitutional right uh, when we are uh, uplifting the legacy of, of people that have come before us and hitting these streets, that they do not uh, attack protesters with military grade weaponry. These are all responsibilities by the system and not the people who are using, uh, utilizing uh, their constitutional right. And so when it comes down to what I wanna see, I wanna see us validate the people who are on the ground and not gaslight them uh, like the you know the chief of police did when she called the people who were using um, their voices and their bodies terrorists here in the city of Atlanta. We need to focus on what is, at, what is being asked of the system and not what is being asked of the people. Because if, if Black people were not being killed unarmed every 28 hours, we would not be in the streets, right? If Black people weren't being kicked out of their homes and weren't losing their homes because of gentrification, we wouldn't be in the streets. Um, and I just want to look up the eight to abolition steps that have been going around the country for the past couple of days and what led to um, the, Minneapolis, um, the Minneapolis city deciding to defund their police officers. Um, Abolition is this idea that nobody belongs in a cage, and the idea that we should be attacking citizens or attacking people in our city for, you know, using their constitutional right comes from a long legacy of slavery in many forms. Um, and so one of the main things, one of the main, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, next steps, young people are asking for us to defund the police. Young people are asking us to stop, uh, stop putting uh, police officers in our schools. Young people are asking us to free people from jails and prisons, invest in care not cops, and demilitarize communities, which means stop giving local police precincts uh, access to military grade weaponry. And in Atlanta specifically, I don't know how many people know, but the Atlanta Police Department is um, trained by Israeli soldiers. We send our soldiers over to Jordan, which is known for their torture and suppression tactics. And we train them and we use those tactics against people in Atlanta. And, it's, and all of that money needs to be going to schools, needs yeah. to be going to um, giving people a livable wage, and needs to be going to make sure that we are uplifting our communities from the ground up, not police officers, because they have proven time and time again that that is not something that they are able to do. And the people have proven that we are able to do that time and time again.